So if S is finite dimensional, then S perp, what do you think it's going to be? We'll just see that any vector space, whether it's finite dimensional or not, that's in fact the next result. We'll see that it can have a direct sum decomposition into S and its orthogonal complement. So if the original vector space is not finite dimensional, if S is finite dimensional, then its orthogonal complement needs to be in finite dimensional. And then the orthogonal complement's orthogonal complement, yeah, why do you expect it to be finite dimensional after all? It's basically all down to, we will not get there in this course, but it's all down to the closed property of Hilbert spaces. These are inner product spaces, Hilbert spaces. If they're closed, then you can go ahead and do it. If they're not closed, so again, we'll not prove it. I mean, let's not get very technical with that. But if, I mean, all finite dimensional vector spaces are closed. What are uh, vector spaces endowed with inner products in which, so Hilbert spaces are special cases of Banach spaces. Banach spaces are spaces with norms. We've spoken about it very briefly in the very first lecture. So norms can come from different uh, sort of uh, motivations. But if the norm happens to be defined in terms of the inner product, then those are Hilbert spaces. So Hilbert spaces have an inner product and then that inner product itself automatically brings with it this norm. But even if you don't have an inner product, you can still have a norm. The notion of a distance can still be defined irrespective of whether you have an inner product or not. That's a Banach space. Okay, so next suppose, as I said, you have U, which is a subspace of an inner product space, yeah? All right, and suppose, so this is, this is the big assumption here. Suppose for all V in V, there exists V hat in U such that V hat is the best approximation of V in U. Then V is equal to U direct sum with U perp. And the proof is much easier than it seems in this statement. So consider any V, V in V. We can write V as V minus V hat plus V hat, yeah. So what do we know from our very definition of best approximation? Where does this fellow come from? Now that you know what an orthogonal complement is, V minus V hat must belong to the orthogonal complement of U. It satisfies, no? See, what is, what is something that is in the, that is the best approximation? The best approximation must be orthogonal to every vector in U. So it must therefore belong to the orthogonal complement of U. So this fellow belongs to the orthogonal complement of U. And this fellow, needless to say, belongs to U. Because it is a candidate best approximation of V in U. So of course, this implies that V is certainly a sum at least of u and u perp. Whether it's a direct sum or not is left to prove. I mean, the moment you are told that there is a best approximation for every vector, then go ahead and write any vector, any arbitrary vector in this form with respect to its best approximation u. So therefore, any vector can be represented, any vector in v can be represented as a sum of two vectors, one of which comes from u and one of which comes from u perp. Now what we have to show is that u and u perp, this is a direct sum. Of course, the straightforward way to do that is to show what is in the intersection of u and u perp, right? So if v bar belongs to u intersection u perp, then what does it satisfy? It implies it belongs to u. So the inner product of v with itself, when I'm taking this v, 
let us assume it has a dual identity. So, this v, this v bar now it belongs to u and when I am looking at it as a second argument of course, it is the same fellow, but it has multiple identities. So, this then belongs to u perp, but what do we know about an inner product of a fellow in u with a fellow in u perp? It is 0 by the definition. This means that the norm of v bar must be 0. That means if something belongs to this, then it can be nothing other than the 0 vector. So, therefore, u intersection u perp is equal to just the 0 vector. So, therefore, this of course means that based on this and on this that v is equal to u direct sum with u perp. No assumptions on dimensions as such here yeah, in this, right. All we have assumed is that this. Now, of course, we know if u is finite dimensional, then such a best approximation is guaranteed to exist. But that is like an maybe like an overkill, no, it is like a sufficient condition. Even if it is not finite dimensional, you might have a best approximation. Provided you have a best approximation, you can go ahead and do this, right. Okay. So, in whatever little time is left today, the last part of this lecture, I will introduce the projection maps and that will be very vital in seeing certain important results, uh, more specifically the orthogonal projection map. Okay, so, there are things like oblique projections as well, we will not go there, we will talk about orthogonal projections, right. So, what is an orthogonal projection? So, this part is clear, right? This claim and this cute little result is I hope clarified. So, there is this map, projection map P, which takes objects in V. Of course, first of all, you obviously have a subspace of V sitting inside it, which is U, right? So, this is a mapping from a vector space V to a subspace of itself. And what sort of a map is this? It takes fellows in V and maps them to their best approximations in U. And now we, by now we already know what is this best approximation business. So, that is all it does. So, this is a projection map. You have a vector space and inner product space. Of course, it maps fellows from the inner product space to a subspace. So, uh, maybe by rights I should just put a subscript U here, but I will omit that. For every subspace you choose, you can have a P U, P U. but okay, for now you understand from the notation what this is. Our standing assumption is U is a subspace of the inner product space V, right? So, it takes a fellow and maps it to its best approximation, right? All right. So, the first claim is that P is linear. What that means is, now suppose v1 gets mapped to v1 hat, v2 gets mapped to v2 hat, then the question is does alpha v1 plus v2 get mapped to alpha v1 hat plus v2 hat? If the answer is yes, then of course, it is a linear map, is it not? So, now we are going to use the equivalence condition for the best approximation, which is through the inner product. Right? So, from these two given conditions, sorry, these two given conditions, I shall write v1 minus v1 hat inner product with u is equal to 0 for all u in u and v2 minus v2 hat inner product with u is equal to 0 for all u in u, right? 
So let us look at alpha v1 plus v2 minus alpha v1 hat plus v2 hat inner product with some arbitrary u for some u in u that is given by collecting together terms such as v1 and v1 hat what we will have is alpha v1 minus v1 hat with u. In fact, I am going to just in one shot pull out the alpha. So, and alpha in f of course, <clears throat> yeah, plus inner product of v2 minus v2 hat with u. But from these two, what can I write? This is 0, this is also 0, yeah. So, this is 0 and we know that this best approximation is unique as we proved earlier. So, the best approximation is unique and I have exactly found one such candidate, right. So, if I call this a new vector, then its best approximation is this. So, that means P is a mapping from v to u such that it takes alpha v1 plus v2 to alpha v1 hat plus v2 hat which is just another way of saying really that p acting on alpha v1 plus v2 is equal to alpha what is v1 hat p acting on v1 p acting on v1 plus v2 hat is just p acting on v2, right, ergo the linearity. So, the projection, the orthogonal projection map, so I should write maybe orthogonal projection map of course. So, the orthogonal projection map is linear, clear? Okay, what can we say about the image of the orthogonal projection map? So, of course, by its very definition, notice that the image of P is contained in what? U, of course, right. But can I show the other way around? That is, for every arbitrary object I pick in U, must it have a pre-image in V? In fact, it will. If I just go ahead and pick the same object in U, intuitively you feel like every object in U is its own best approximation. That is very obvious, commonsensical way of seeing things, right? U is sitting inside V, so any object in U is also an object in V. So, if you want to find out the best approximation of an object if you want to find out the best approximation of a quadratic polynomial among all quadratic polynomials, it is just the quadratic polynomial, right. I mean, if you want to be a little more formal about it, then just say that for some u in u, yeah, consider p u minus u must be equal to 0 for all u tilde in u, is it not? That is the best approximation equivalence that the error vector because p u gives you the, p u spits out the best approximation of a vector in u. So, p u minus u is the error vector and the error vector must be orthogonal to every vector in u. So, this u tilde is arbitrary. So, choose u tilde is equal to p u minus u, why not? I mean u is in u of course by my choice and p u obviously maps two objects in u. So, it is a sum of two objects in u. So, this is also an object in u. So, then what happens? It is the norm of p u minus u is equal to 0 which means u is equal to p u. 
if you want to find out the pre image of any object in you it is itself its own pre image at least one such pre image is itself there are several others which also project back may not belong to you but belong to v and that can be projected back to you but at least one image is already there so at least every object has a pre image right so the image of so then u is also contained in the image of p and by virtue of these we can say that image of p is equal to u there is also another crucial detail we will say that this projection map is also idempotent I mean you must have come across this term somewhere in the context of matrices so projection map is idempotent which is to say that if you compose this p with itself so for want of a better notation or abuse of notation rather I just say p squared is equal to p that is just a composition of p on p why because once you let p act on a vector you are already in u thereafter if you keep acting on it through p it changes nothing it just projects it back to the same vector so that is why it is idempotent right so in the next lecture when we come back we shall also study the kernel of this projection map and we will see that the kernel is nothing but the orthogonal complement of u okay so that is what we will start off with in the next lecture thank you